Hello, welcome to Dunk Girls Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. So today, we're reviewing season three, the final season, uh, Netflix Dark, which aired, well, the first season aired in 2017, the second season, I think 2019, and the final season was this season, 2020. So, uh, well, first off, it, the show was created by Baron Bo Odar and Jeanche Freeze, which are a married couple. I didn't know that until I started watching interviews after I finished watching the show uh, on Saturday, which it's Monday night now, and I, I needed some time to think about it. Uh, usually, I do my reviews right after I finish something, uh, you know, cause that's when you have it fresh in your head, but like this, this season, uh, I needed to think about it, right? Uh, which I need to sit down and think about. So, the, the, we'll start off with the cast. You got Lewis Hoffman as Jonas, Jonas Conwald, Maja Schoen as Hannah Conwald, Oliver Masucci as Ulrich Nielsen, Lisa Vicari as Marfa, Marfa Nielsen, uh, Jordis Trimble as Kat, Katarina Nielsen, and Andreas Fishman as The Stranger. Uh, yeah, so this season... First off, this is pretty much going to be all spoilers, uh, especially for the previous seasons. So if you, sorry, I burped. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you haven't seen season one or season two, I highly recommend it. It basically, a lot of people say it's basically a dark Stranger Things. I don't know. I think it's it's very much. I think it has like a Twin Peaks kind of feel to it. If you, if you're a fan of Stephen King esque uh, dramas mixed with science fiction and like you know epic like epic journeys, you'll probably love this show. So now I'm going to go into spoilers. So the the show well the show um, season two ended with. Uh, Adam killing Marfa and Louis and Louis Hoffman uh, getting saved by uh, Marfa from an alternate reality right right during the the middle of the uh, the uh, dark matter explosion in Winden, which causes the apocalypse in in 2020, <laughs> right? And they and um, yeah they um, get. In this season, after that, you know, we get uh, we get introduced to the survivors, which are Peter and uh, Peter and his daughter, his deaf daughter Charlotte, in 2020. Um, uh, not Charlotte, uh, Elizabeth. Charlotte, uh, Charlotte um, escaped to the future in 2050 something. Where he, she meets her daughter, her daughter Elizabeth, and um, it's it basically explained everything, and is and they go off to work for Adam, right? You, you have you got Hannah, who traveled to 1950s to have an who who started having an affair with Egon Tiedelman, who ru she, Hannah ruins the fucking uh, Tiedelman. Marriage of <laughs> fucking bitch and gets pregnant, which turns out to be Silchia, uh, who is the girl who was like the underling of Elizabeth in the future, right? Who travels back in time thanks to Jonas and uh, meets like uh, and meets uh, Bartros, which they turn which they turn out to be the parents of Noah and Agnes. Which they explained the retcon of uh, last season, right? Also, we got like you know the we get introduced to we get introduced to the an alternate reality where Jonas doesn't exist and uh, and um, Ulrich Nielsen is divorced from. Uh, Katarina and Katarina and family are living in Jonas's old house, right? And Hannah is pregnant and is um, 
is married to Ulrich Nielsen. Ulrich Nielsen is having an affair with Charlotte. And Peter, who's not, who's a priest, the husband of Charlotte, is uh, still gay. <laughs> who's not even a tranny chaser. Now he's gay with, uh, with uh, non-transgender Benny, which it took me a while to recognize him at the church. Oh, Peter, man. They keep... Which you got to see a young Peter in this, uh... In this season as well. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Sorry, I should have done a review right after, but I need to think about it. So, uh, uh, most of this season, I would say Martha... The alternate reality, Martha, is the main character uh, of this season. Where you kind of... Where she's basically the Jonas of her world she even has a villain in the show called ava which is eve <laughs> which is like eve from adam and eve and it turns out that the real the real two parties of the war again war for the battle of time travel supremacy is actually adam and eve adam being the future version of jonas and ava being the future version of martha right which it turn it uh, it turns out that um, they had that there's like three these three henchmen which are are the a young boy a middle aged man and an old man who are who are like the henchmen of uh, henchmen of Ava who travels between both worlds to to fix gaps to make sure that everything happens correctly. Uh, to keep to keep the, the time loop going, which you know Adam wants to destroy the time loop, and Ava wants to keep it going, but they both uh, lie and and uh, lie and like uh, manipulate their younger versions, even versions of their other self. Where you get to see Ava kill a young Jonas and Adam kill like uh, a young Martha a second time around, which it turns out they introduce. They explain. Not only do they explain why certain characters are still alive when they should be dead, Eva, a, a, a like um, uh, a time. Uh, oh, how do they explain it again? Again? Oh fuck! Ba uh, basically, a glitch in the matrix, <laughs> which is the line from the show. Uh, basically, when the dark matter explosion happened, there was a brief period where time, where uh, time is. Uh, standing still where they where characters can like you know um, basically do things uh, basically do things that should should be impossible without affecting the future the future right or the sukant as they call it in this show All right uh, yeah so and uh, yeah they basically I, I don't want to spoil too much I, too much but uh, they also explained away the the bootstrap paradoxes of the first two seasons where like there was so many bootstrap paradoxes that it kind of like shit didn't make sense like especially like the one character H.G. Tonhouse who's like the creator of time travel who created time travel in the first who created time travel but then, like, you watch the show and it turns out he was inspired by future time travelers who wouldn't even know about time travel if he didn't invent it in the first place, right? They explained that away by saying that there's actually a third, a third reality, a third world, which is the original world, right? And that, that these two realities were Jonas and the future, sorry, the different Martha are from, right? And uh, our... our Basically, our two like Romeo, our jo Romeo and Juliet couple have to uh, team up together to find a way to find a way to the original world, the original world, and stop H.E. Tonhouse from creating time travel in the first place, right? Which they uh, to, to to explain how the the the, the two world, the two other worlds were created, uh, split from the original world. They, they give us an explanation on soldiers, uh, what, what's, what's 
the thing, the soldier's cat or some shit, which makes no fucking sense. It's basically somebody puts a cat in a steel box with poison and sets a trap where, like, a hammer will fall and, like, you know, uh, break a, a veil of poison. And it just somehow creates, like, two realities where, a, where the cat lives or dies. That's basically how they explain the split person, the, the split, uh, you know, realities, which they don't, they don't ever explain fucking, um, they don't ever explain, um, how Elizabeth, how Elizabeth can be both her, her grandmother and granddaughter, uh, or, or yeah, yeah, or, or the other way around for Charlotte, they never explain, they never explain that, uh, yeah, and it turns out I was watching interviews. It turns out that the the writers for the the creators of the show didn't plan out everything. That they wanted to keep things like fluid in motion, right? Because it, it apparent the female the female writers' uh, exact words is it's not fun to like know everything at the beginning when, when you're creating the show. So like I can. I, I wanted there to be a fog so it would be more fun or whatever so it, that kind of that kind of annoys me because if shit if shit it, if a complex show like this right where like you need like where you need like like maps and shit to explain people's like origin stores and shit like that it turns out to be like you were making up as you were going along it just it just seems like bullshit to me right and then there's the fact that it kind of, it's like, like the way this bird season was written, like you basically you had like the it 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 was basically like a basically like a remake of season one and two put together, but from Marfa's perspective, and to the thing where there there's there, you even see the. You even see, there's even like a ticking clock for the apocalypse of Martha's world, right? Where you got to see the, I will admit, it was kind of cool to see the, uh, to see like, you know, uh, different points of view of during that, uh, during that, um, uh, scene because you got, you got to find out, okay, who the real, like, who, who the real cul culprit uh, culprits were for the the apocalypse, which it turned. I'm not gonna spoil who, but yeah, like uh, also like yeah, the the one the the characters, um, the the three henchmen of Ava, that kind of does not make sense how those three characters can like are constantly like together all the time, even though they're, they're younger and older versions of themselves. That was kind of dumb, and it's. They kind of implied that I don't know if this is true, but they kind of implied that um, that they were the father of Tronte, which is the, the the father of Ulrich Nielsen and the grandfather of Jonas, uh, not grandfather, the great grandfather of Jonas Conwell, which the the the, the show does um, do, does uh, take uh, take uh, some spend some time in the 50s and the 80s. Even though it's kind of like, what's the point? Which, by the way, um, Katarina Nielsen tra time traveled to the '80s to try to rescue Ulrich Nielsen, which the, that ended there. <laughs> that ended very dumb. Like it, we almost didn't even need that. But whatever, right? Yeah. But yeah. Ba ba basically, my my problem with the show is it, it kind of like I told not only Hollywood. The, the this season felt like kind of like felt kind of rushed because you got you had to see a lot of the characters grow up and become their future selves, uh, future selves, and and then the, there was the the romance aspect which was uh, romance a aspect of it and then the fucking romanticization of like nihilism that's in the show and like the com there's like a common theme of like abortion throughout the show <laughs> i forgot to mention that uh yeah which like you know, when there's this a scene where like hannah is going to have an abortion and she meets like katarina's mother right and that that 
uh, which I, I'm not going to say whether or not she did or not, but yeah, yeah, that that's a common thing because like basically our char- our characters are trying to like uh, make make themselves like you know are trying to make make it so like everything doesn't happen right, so they don't exist anymore. So it's kind of like a euthanasia, kind of like an abortion, right? Which the ending for the show, I'm not going to spoil the what happens, but you got you kind of got to see uh, the presence of the original world. Where you got to see like all, all of the characters who were supposed to exist and who weren't supposed to exist, the people who were supposed to exist having dinner, and uh, yeah, you, uh, having dinner, and then like you have this scene where like uh, Hannah is like saying like, who's married to Voller now, uh, married to Voller, the 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 cop with the one eye, who they never they never explain how he lost his eye. They make a running gag out of it, and then in the Marfa's alternate Marfa universe, like he's missing an arm, right? And uh, yeah, she she explains, oh, she's gonna name her son Joan, uh, Jonas, even though even if she does have a son named Joan, it's it kind of like a a sequ- I don't know if they were sequel baiting or what, uh, but it was like I I don't know, it felt dumb because it, like it's not gonna be the same fucking Jonas, right? Right. Also, there there is a thing where like Marfa and like the alternate reality version of Marfa and Jonas have like this like uh, have this romance that was basically a one one night stand, and we're supposed to believe like she fell in love with him, uh, at, like she fell in love with him after that, and it's just like feel like wow, that's so dumb. Because, like, these characters don't really have that much history with each other because she's not the real Marfa, right? But, like, they'll... But, like, Ava tries to use the Marfa to manipulate, like, Adam and, like, you know, the stranger, which is the middle-aged, uh, middle-aged Jonas. <sighs> which, there, there's also a common theme where, like, every time, like, things loop around... Uh, things, there's like a drift where like things change a little, a little bit. Like, cause like the first time you see the alternate Marfa, she has this cut on her like right cheek. And then like later on the show, it it's on her left cheek, right? So it's like, it's, the show is trying to tell you all oh, like things are changing, right? Which is, there's this great scene where like Adam time travels. Uh, to Mar- Marfa, uh, sorry, not Marfa, uh, the Ava's, uh, Ava's world to kill Ava, and, like, it turns out, uh, she, she thinks she's gonna get killed by, um, by Adam, which, and it turns out, like, the gun was empty, and he has the bullets on the other end. I thought that was a really cool scene, and, it, and it's kind of dumb for him to kill Ava, because it's like, I don't need to kill... He doesn't need to kill her to win. Because, like, once he wins, everybody's going to die, everybody. Right? So that's that, that's kind of the... Uh, sorry about that. But, yeah, I got to talk about that. Where, like, ev- ev- the everybody, like, dissipates into light, like, light orbs that floats into, like, the, um, to the sky. And that's how, like, everything ends. And, like, you see the... See the original world, right? So I, uh, I guess that was supposed to be a happy ending, but it's like, uh, I don't know. It's the thing where it's what the characters kind of wanted, but it's like, because it's like, it's that or keep the time loops, that time loop going, where like all, where everybody has to deal with the same traumas and the same, like, you know, um, same, uh, suffering time time again right but it's like it, I don't know it's it, it just seems like wow that's ah well it's what the characters wanted right so I kind of didn't like where like you know Claudia shows up and basically like uh, makes fun of the fact that like you know, Adam and Eva Ava think they're having this epic battle between good versus evil where like one person's good one person's evil and it's just, it's just bullshit. <laughs> she just exposes it out as, like, it's just a bullshit cat and mouse play fighting. 
it's like I I really didn't like that. That kind of ruined the fucking show. That made it, it kind of made it like it, it made like everything like fucking like seem like kind of silly and uh, stupid. Especially when you have like Adam and Ava both are like heavily scarred old people that are like kind of like Darth Vader characters, and it's like wow, it really exposes how like fraud like what what frauds they were. It it kind of ruins the show, which is why I kind of I'm only giving this. This season, a seven out of ten. Uh, yeah, it it's the thing where, like, like I said, it turns into it, the show kind of starts to get dumb in the first, in the third and final season. Kind of turns into a YA YA romance novel, <laughs> which, I, uh, which I I don't like. I don't I honestly don't like that at all. But I got uh, I kind of like the whole like <laughs> good versus evil aspect of it, but like, yeah, it, it is what it is, uh, yeah, though I kind of, I was not expecting for them to fix the, the bootstrap paradoxes that they created, <laughs> the fact that they actually did that is like, wow, holy fuck, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it would take smarter people than me to figure out, does that actually make sense or not, who the fuck knows, because apparently Soldier Jure's cat uh, theory makes sense, and every time I try to think, I, I, I think about it, trying to make sense of it, it just seems like fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, science, psycho babble, not, not psycho babble, but like, you know, uh, techno jabble fucking bullshit to me, but whatever, right? I'm sure somebody will, will explain it to me and talk down to me like I'm a fucking idiot, right? Alright, guys, that's it for this review. Uh, I'm sorry, like, it, it was so disjointed and fucking random, but they, yeah, that's why, that's why you should always, when you're gonna review something, you should always do it, uh, right after you fucking finish it. Don't, don't fucking take a break to think about it, uh, days later. Just fu just fucking do it, man. Just do it. <laughs> uh, alright, guys. Like, and I, like I said, I, I, I think I forgot to say it, but like, yeah, if you're gonna, if you're a fan of these characters, it's still worth watching, right? But it's, it's kind of fucked up how, like, <laughs> incestuous the whole family tree, the whole Winden family tree is, and like, there were like a bunch of characters, we never fucking figured out their origin story, and like, there was like, mysteries that kind of just were dropped off. Like, who the fuck was Clouser and his brother? How did his brother die? What was Alexander's backstory? Who the fuck was, like, uh, Regina's father? Not, none of that was resolved. Or how Valder lo lost his eye, which, you know, we're not supposed to know. That was a rat running gag. But, yeah, that was, I thought that was stupid. But uh, other than that, it is what it is, guys. Uh... Hopefully the next Twin Peaks sh like show I watch is good, which is supposed to I forget what it's called, but it's like uh, Homeward some Homeward uh, something, which is like a Twin Peaks ripoff made by M Night Shyamalan, so you know it's probably gonna suck. Homeward Bound, that's that's what it was called. Not Homeward Bound. Fuck. I'll, I'll, fi I'll figure it out later, guys. Alright, peace.